Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A moment of silence, please. watching or will be watching. Roll call today. I'm going to start with Commissioner Doug Smith. Here. Mr. Steven. Here. Mr. Coberson. Here. Mr. Cause. Here. And I'm here. Before we go any further, I would sing, but I would scare you folks. I want to wish Commissioner Cause a happy birthday. Is this happy your birthday? birthday? Happy birthday. Thank you. I think I forget, did you not, Vicki? Uh, <laughs> I don't think there's any comments on the thing. Okay, Mark. Okay. Well, it's not. We'll go to administrative business. Um, one thing before we go any further, um, if we could, we're doing um, uh, county administrator's evaluation. If we could get that back within the next week, it'd, it'd be a big help. So, if y'all are not on it, please, please take a, take a look at that. Mark, do you have anything? Uh, Commissioner, I just want to say that um, over the past weekend, I did receive a few complaints on the construction going on on 158th about. Uh, the condition of the road for the people who live there. You know, I know it's going to be very inconvenient for those folks as we do this project. And there are some things that you are just going to have to put up with as a property owner along there, but there are some things that our contractor needs to be doing a better job of. And I've got uh, Vince and our inspector and uh, Bill are aware of it and working on it. Um, I think some of it probably was because of the rain we had the, over the weekend, but um, there are some things they just probably need to be doing a little bit better job on. Okay. Anything else, Mark? Yeah, that's pretty important, too, because we've got a fire station on there. Yep. Yeah. Also. <clears throat> Pass. Yeah. Commissioners, y'all have anything before I move on? I just have one thing. Go ahead, Mike. Um, I think that we're in kind of a heated time in our society right now as far as all the issues that are coming up. But I do think it... It's important that we realize that defacing property and especially church signs is completely unacceptable. That's not part of the discourse or tearing down people's signs, stealing their signs. This is a the, the society we live in it depends on having a rule of law and being civil in our discourse. And I just uh, think we should urge each other to have respect for each other, and we have differences of opinion on issues, and we should respect that. Yeah, I saw a couple of shirts I was really disappointed that uh, people would do that. But we're all better than that. Yeah, I think that's the bottom line. We're, we're better than that. Well, I think vandalism's wrong anytime. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree, with them. I agree. Okay, Mike, anything else? That's all. Commissioners, anybody else? Okay. okay. Um, is any item, we move on to the consent agenda, any item need to be removed from the consent agenda? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask you to remove the check registry from the consent agenda. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the consent agenda minus the check registry. Second it. Mr. Smith? Thing. Mr. Stevens? Aye. Mr. Coberson? Aye. Your cause? Aye. And I vote aye. And Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the consent agenda check registry section. Second it. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Steven? Aye. Mr. Coberson? Aye. Mr. Collins? Aye. I vote aye. Okay, thank you. Formal board action. Consider a motion to approve. Well, one thing before we go any further. Anybody got any phones? Put them on silence, please. Uh, formal, formal board action. Consider a motion to approve and authorize the chairman to sign the interlocal agreement for the 2022 Edward Byrne Memorial Just Assistant Grant. Morning. Morning. Bring before you this morning an interlocal agreement for the Edward uh, Byrne Memorial 
JAG assistance grant. Uh, typically, we enter into this agreement each year with the Wellborn Police Department, split the funds. Um, we'll utilize the funds for mostly body cams and the storage of the digital media related to it. That's been an ongoing process for the last several years. We do have the ability to adjust the uh, intended purpose for the funds, but uh, our focus at this point is going to continue to be the uh, body cams. I would ask that the board would uh, review the document. Consider signing. Excellent. Body cameras is part of the uniform nowadays. Any comments or questions for Major? Well, we do this every year. Yeah, we do. In fact, get a motion. Well, I hope it continues. Yeah, me too. Motion to approve the author for the chair to sign um, the interlocal agreement for the 2022 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant. I'll second that. Motion to second discussion. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Stevens? Aye. Mr. Culberson? Aye. Mr. Cause? Aye. And of course, aye. Very good. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, folks. Have a good Thank day. Thank you. You too. Item B is consider a motion to approve the purchase of two tracts of real property commonly referred to as 712 Marshall and 716 Marshall for the total of sum of 15000 and that the chairman be authorized to sign the agreement for purchase and sale as negotiated and submitted by staff. Mark? Commissioners, these are the two lots that are uh, to the northwest, north, yeah, northwest corner of the Cushing across the street. Um, the uh, Currently... Uh, the property owner of St. Luke's, uh, they have agreed to uh, sell us those two lots. They don't have a use for them, but we believe that they would come in handy as a parking in the future. So yeah. just asking the board to authorize the $15,000 to purchase those two lots. Comments, commissioners? We discussed no. this, and I think it's a, it's a way to look for the future because we're definitely going to need them. Yeah. And I'll tell you, entertain a motion. I move that we uh, authorize the purchase of 712 Marshall and 716 Marshall in a total sum of $15,000. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Steven? Aye. Mr. Culberson? Aye. Mr. Cause? Aye. And I vote aye. Very good. <coughs> okay, moving on. Presentation discussion. Economic Development Quarterly Report. Come on down, Tom. Welcome. Commissioners, thank you for the time this morning as we're just about six months into having economic development services or economic development uh, inside the walls of this building. Uh, I think it's important to give you a report as to kind of what we're doing. And, and you know, when this position was created uh, and I came on board, say, say middle of January, one of the most important things to figure out was, was what in the heck is this guy supposed to be doing? So uh, this is basically sort of an update on, on what, what has been going on and what we are working on. Uh, uh, upon coming on board, really, I was really confronted or, or given two primary things with the goal of let's see if we can knock these out in the first six months. One being the economic development policy, the second being an infrastructure inventory map. The economic development policy, uh, you saw the initial draft a uh, couple of months ago, maybe 45 days ago. Uh, after that, I shared it with the communities, with LCDC, Port Authority, got a couple of comments back, nothing detrimental or nothing uh, really major or, or of much significance, uh, but that will be coming back to you for final approval here in the next few weeks. Uh, so we will have that one certainly knocked off in that six-month uh, goal zone, if you will. The second item was the infrastructure inventory map, which essentially is a GIS map that demonstrates or shows where all the water lines are, all the uh, electrical substations, all the, all the larger utilities, so we don't find ourselves in a situation of a, a business or an entity coming to Love North County saying, hey, we want to, you know, we want to do whatever we want to do, and then we offer up a property that just doesn't match what they need. So uh, we've got that. Uh, I, I will say it's, it's essentially done. Mark may have some other things added to it at some point, but I, I think the, the real blood and guts of it or the true uh, information that we needed is in that. The reason it is not in your packet is in a post-9-11 world, it's not that great to disclose where every one of your water lines are uh, with, within your area. So, uh, so those two uh, items are certainly uh, near the finish line or right at the finish line. 
Other things that have been going on is relationship enhancement with Leavenworth, Leavenworth County uh, communities and agencies. So LCDC, Port Authority, each of the communities, and those have been going great. And I've been I've been very well received by each each of those entities and each of those communities. And and I think I think we'll talk about this here in a minute. But I think everybody kind of has their own pet projects now. Oh, Tom can assist us with this and this and this and provide some support that maybe they didn't have in, in the past. Uh, also, spending a lot of time identifying what the true desires of each community. Uh, is um, you know some communities are seeking manufacturing some just want a little grocery store somewhere down the corner so there's a wide variety of, of needs and desires out there and we're certainly assisting with that uh, one thing we'll come back to here in just a second is as we already already had the Port Authority and LCDC uh, really a primary factor or primary goal was okay how what are we gonna how are we gonna divide up the labor who's gonna do what how are we gonna kind of stay sort of there's gonna be some overlap of course there's certainly going to be some partnering. Uh, that's that's irrefutable. There will be partnering, uh, but primarily, what is each of the entities uh, or, or, or interests? What are they really going to be doing? We'll talk about that here in just a second. But uh, we've had some great meetings on that, and I think we've come to a consensus. Um, I brought uh, CoStar data analytics into uh, a county government, which is simply a a uh, it's a service for a subscription service where I'm the administrator here in this building of, of the CoStar system. And it, it's, it's twofold. Uh, on, on one hand, it is a very powerful uh, real estate database. That it, and the beauty of this one is CoStar actually has a number of call centers of folks who hassle real estate people every single day for the most up-to-date details on every property that we've got. So it takes a bit of the burden off the person in-house uh, to go out and identify what those, real, what those properties are what their asking value is and, and whatnot. But the most powerful component to an economic developer of CoStar is the data, data analytics, where, and I've provided a couple of, of uh, a couple of snapshots on the second page of my, my packet for you, and we can kind of go through those here in a second. Um, but really analyzing about anything that you could possibly analyze within the county. Another powerful factor is it also shows whose leases are coming up, say, in the next two years. That gives us a head start and an and ability and an opportunity to go out and meet with those folks and say, hey, What's going to happen in two years? Are you growing? Are you shrinking? Are you leaving? Are you building something new? And that gets us really in the front door and in, in, in their space really well in advance of them making a decision or us getting a surprise announcement, if you will, that somebody's moving or, or doing something else. Um, sometime, I would guess probably here the next 60, 90 days, uh, a task force will be put together, and this is really spearheaded by uh, LCDC and the Port Authority, to evaluate future business parks. Now, now, a great initial question to that would be, well, don't we have some vacancy in our current business parks? Uh, the reason for this is there are a couple of projects and some project activity out there that can dramatically change and reduce the inventory that we have right now of, of available space. So this is really kind of looking at the horizon of where do we want to be and what else can we, uh, where else can we develop a, a business park in the future in the event that, uh, that we currently or, or suddenly have a shortage of space. Um, uh, we, we've joined the International Economic Development Council and an entity called ICSC. I can't tell you what it stands for today. It used to be International Council of Shopping Centers, but shopping centers are far and few between, but it's basically a retail trade organization Large. that does a lot of great things. Yeah. Um, also working on a survey of developers, uh, both locally and regionally, uh, to really identify the best practices of the places that they really prefer to do business. What, what communities, counties, cities seemingly roll out the red carpet a little bit more than others. Not just talking about incentives, but maybe their permitting process and, and planning process and whatnot. Uh, and then finally, as, as discussed, I think the last time we were here, working on uh, a draft incentive or incentive idea for reinvestment in homes. Uh, perhaps some sort of a, a short-term uh, tax break or some sort of a, a, an award uh, to encourage the to encourage ho uh, home maintenance and stay in uh, uh, property stabilization of properties that have kind of fallen a little bit to the wayside and are, are losing value rather than gaining value in, in the current market. Um, like I said, the second page is just kind of a real brief snapshot of some of the CoStar statistics. Uh, showing what's going on in industrial, retail, office, and multifamily. Um, and, of course, uh, housing didn't used to be a component of economic development at all. Over the past decade, it's become more and more of a component because if you don't have houses and you don't have places for people to live, you, your labor force suffers. Um, so what's provided there sort of shows some of the vacancy rates that we have in each of those four seg uh, business segments. Um, 
what our inventory is as well as the current lease rates uh, that we're seeing here in Leavenworth County. And, and frankly, uh, as I look at the rest of the metro, our lease rates, uh, even our sale rates, are, are pretty affordable compared to the rest of the metro area. So, so those are all pretty, pretty positive things. Uh, we just really need to do a, a better job, I think, globally of, of marketing what we've got and, and what you get for the dollar here. And then the uh, third page is that distribution of economic development services or distribution of labor, if you will. And what we really wanted to do is to, to maintain uh, LCDC and Port Authority and let them continue to do best. And what can uh, I offer to the communities, to the residents of this county that maybe don't fit into those other things? So it's really sort of expanded the, the general services of economic development. So here in-house, retail recruitment and support, LCDC and the Port Authority really aren't set up or had the expertise for retail recruitment. Plus, that's something that a number of our communities are really craving right now is additional retailers, uh, not only to provide services and amenities to their residents, but also to help bolster their local tax base. Um, uh, non-commercial or, or commercial non-industrial development and construction, this would be things like like office structures or small uh, users finding space and whatnot. Residential development, recruitment and support, meeting with uh, uh, residential developers, the HBA and whatnot, garnering, uh, garnering interest in Leavenworth County. Entrepreneurship, development and support, that could be a variety of things. Um, I, I think maybe one of the, the unique things of, of my particular background is I spent the first you know, seven or eight years of my career as a small business consultant. So anybody who has an idea or, you know, that cocktail napkin idea of what they want to do with the rest of their life, we can certainly assist with that. And, and uh, whether that be business plans, marketing plans, finance plans, help them identify financing uh, or finance programs to help them get their get their dream up and running, that is, that is uh, easy for me and something I, I thoroughly enjoy having. Uh, help start, I think, somewhere between 800 and 1,000 small businesses now. It's, all, it's, it's one of my favorite things to do. Business retention, uh, that's, that's actually something that, that, the, that uh, LCDC and I will, will share, if you will. Uh, primarily, they're going to be, because uh, I, think, I think both entities have vested interest in knowing what's going on uh, with our, especially with our major employers. Um, so we will, we will share those, those duties. Uh, policy creation and maintenance, that's, that's kind of an as-it-comes deal. Exact, uh, for example, would be the, the ED policy. General ombudsman services, that's simply a fancy way of saying uh, I can escort someone through the process, through our uh, planning and regulatory processes here in-house. What that does is that, that, that eliminates an abrupt handoff from Tom being the smiley guy who tells us how great everything is to suddenly dealing with, okay, this is what my permit's going to be, and this is this kind of keeps the same familiar face through the entire process. And, and I found in my career that it's really just a, a great way to, uh, uh, to, to, to escort those projects through the process, if you will. Uh, real estate analytics, that goes back to the CoStar stuff, and then the uh, infrastructure inventory. One thing that... Uh, I've talked about with LCDC and the Port Authority is that none of us, and, and again, this, this, this kind of comes down to how we spend our dollars and it comes down to where we put our effort. Between the three of us, we're really not doing what I would call general marketing, if you will. We, we don't have, say, a Convention and Visitors Bureau or a Tourism Bureau or something like that. So I think we really need to spend some time thinking about how do we best truly market the county as a county rather than just to particular entities or being responsive to requests for information that come in. So to, to figure out how to be a little more proactive in our marketing and sharing the message of, of how great Leavenworth County is. Um, so that is, that is kind of the, the, the matrix of who does what. And then the rest of the packet uh, was in there for, for your information, which I think you've already seen both of those both of those requests, but I included them in this packet uh, uh, just to cover all bases. Uh, one is a budget request for, for uh, the Port Authority and LCDC uh, for their annual budget request. The second is a request for payment for a spec building that I believe is now uh, fully occupied and moving, uh, moving forward and uh, um, they, they, they refer to some previous agreements or some previous non-agreements or handshake agreements or, or whatever that's in there. So I really just wanted to uh, include that in your, your packet as well. As this is budget season, in fact, I think you've got a budget work session following, following me. Um, so with that, I'll open it up to any questions you may have over this brief presentation. Tom, you'd mentioned earlier there will be a task force put together mm -hmm. to basically 
study to see where where we could to, 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 to really study to see, you know, all the parameters of, of what should go into maybe the next business park. That would be the size, the scope, the location, what amenities, whether it be uh, a rail amenity, whether it should be in, 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 whatever. Um, so, 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 yeah, exactly. And right now that's at square one. Right now I don't think there are really any any uh, uh, well, leading ideas, if you I will. Just, um, uh, the whole turnpike interchange on County Road 1 was that was how they sold it to everybody to vote on that sales tax was to uh, you know, develop that area in there and have access to the turnpike and that was going to lower everybody's property taxes. Then that should be a focal point. taking a while. That hasn't happened yet, <laughs> what I'm getting. <laughs> <laughs> but. It is good access. Don't get me wrong. That turnpike access is very important, and it's. And I can't say you know. I'm sure that's why the Tongi area got the hill. Right. Plan. Uh, but I mean, you know, here that's a ten years tax abatement for free, and we we're already fifteen years into it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I know the wheels turn awful slow, but they ought to at least turn. That was a significant investment in that area. Tom, when you see the task force putting this together, who are you, who are you speaking to? Um, it, and honestly, it, it hasn't been composed at this point. The, the task force is an idea at this point, so, so I can't really speak just to kind of who's on it. Okay. 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 Well, I, I think it's a good idea. Hmm? And, I, and I'd like to you know, visit it with all the communities hmm? to see what their desires are, because they are different. Absolutely. They are definitely, big. Baser is a lot different than Tong and Oxy. As yes, close as they are together, they're a lot different. Yes, it is. Any questions for Tom? Night and day. Jeff, you have anything? Mike? I have a couple questions. Uh, the distinction between Leavenworth County's uh, role in recruitment and Leavenworth County Development Corporation's role in recruitment, can you kind of Give me a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we, we will be working hand-in-hand, hand, but, but primarily LCDC uh, pursues industrial projects in nature. Um, so they will continue to be the lead in industrial development, industrial, um, industrial re recruitment. Um, what I will be doing is really helping the communities identify either smaller commercial operations that are not industrial in nature, whether they're office buildings or doctor's offices or retailers or things along those lines or the entrepreneurship side. Uh, but but ultimately, when LCDC has a project, they will, you know, we're going to be in the loop on those and we're going to assist any way that we can. And ultimately, we would be the ones uh, asked for things like tax abatement and, and road development and infrastructure development and things like that. So we, we have to be at the table. Okay. Um, second thing was I know at one of the meetings I was at and we visited and people mm -hmm. were talking was about uh, the fact that Lemoore County doesn't have a tourism bureau mm -hmm. or department or, and divided between these three entities. Is there a thought process on how that can be met? We, the, 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 the three entities have had a, a – it was part of a different conversation, so we haven't had a standalone conversation on this, but, but we all agree that we do need to figure out a, a, or devise a means to better market the county as a whole in the city. Maybe not to the same degree that that a, that a true tourism bureau would, but but really figure out you know how we can market and and I'm talking about like mass market, broad market rather than just being responsive. Which if we're really honest about what we've done in Leavenworth County over the past few decades, we've generally been responsive to, to interested parties. Um, occasionally, we've gone out as as a county and I think found someone to to bring back. Uh, but for the most part, we've been responsive, and, we, and I think all three entities would really like to change that. It's just a matter of figuring out, you know, what's it going to cost and who's going to who's going to do the heavy lifting on on the marketing effort to do that. But no, I think I think that's I think that's that has to be part of our evolution um, in economic development is is to be able to get the message out that this is Leavenworth County and you should know more about it. And tying into that is the need for promoting our agritourism. Sure. That's, so, that's how, much, yeah, as well as all our businesses. Right, right. But uh, specifically that part, how is, uh, do we have, I understand there's been some 
court decisions on the big box stores, but have we had any kind of more delineation on this agritourism thing, or is that still kind of a clouded issue still? Maybe maybe that's a David question. Mr. Van Paris just leaned <laughs> forward. Can you see it, the sky about 8 o'clock this morning? <laughs> that's about how cloudy it is. Yeah. It's being worked on, and commissioners, my understanding was the commission wanted a report on that, and it's being worked on or conduct a work session. Okay. Um, the other thing is, did you ever, and I don't know if this is something that you would do or, or the commission should do, but uh, as far as uh, you or a representative of your department or the commission being a member of the executive board of the LCDC. Is Not yet, but I will, I, will, I will push that if that's what, if, if, uh, upon your request, yes. So, well, I think it's important that we I'll have. Work on okay. Thank and if Vicki works already, on it, it's going to be worked on. I'll work on it. We are the largest investor in the organization. So I'll work on that. <laughs> I think big person take lead on that. Yeah. So, thank you for everything you've thank done. You. I, from everything I've heard, uh, everybody, even the skeptics, I think, are coming to the point that they understand that you're doing a fine job. And, and the intent isn't to uh, isn't to step on anyone's toes or to cloud anything, but to be able to provide a larger palette of services to Leavenworth County so that we can truly attract what the communities need, rather than just focusing on, on one item. That was the whole reason for us to. Bring the, bring the position in place, and I, I think it's going to serve us well. And I, from what I hear, tagging on what Mike's saying, it's already serving us them well. So Great. I'm, I'm glad uh, you're with us, Tom. appreciate yeah, it. I have just one more question. Sure. Mm -hmm. Cole, uh, how serious is our labor pool issue? It's, it's very tight. It's very it, – it, and, it's, and it's not – and obviously it's not just Leavenworth County uh, – Situation, but nationwide, I think there are 11 million open jobs right now, and, little, and less than 50 percent lookers for those or interested parties in those 11. Is our jobs. area worse than say surrounding counties? Um, I can I can actually pull the data and get you some specifics on that. My, my off the cuff, I would say we're probably pretty similar to to our neighbors. Everybody's everybody's fighting for people right so now. I'm sure that's a box that needs to check when it comes to trying to lure businesses. Exactly. It's a statewide issue, and, and the um, uh, 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 workforce partnership meeting was postponed because of technical issues this past month, but we're going to meet again, and I can probably give you a more uh, detailed report next week because the next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday. Okay. Um, the, the new meeting will be held Tuesday, and I can um, ask for an update, but it's it's a statewide issue. The I know, but our, our county's and, growing, increasing, um, you know, a lot more houses being, but people aren't staying here to work, they're working in the surrounding counties. Right, but it's it's, so, a, it's a statewide issue. Yeah. Now, commissioners, um, I know that we are hovering around, we're at historic low unemployment rates. And I think we're hovering around 22 to 2.3% in Leavenworth County which means like nationwide there's more than two jobs for every person who's actually in the workforce. Three percent unemployment is considered fully employed. That's just the three percent is the normal churn. churn. At four percent you have room for the jobs. That, while it's not necessarily the, the magic number, but that's the number you look for so that there should always be somebody for a job that opens up. Right. We're at, so basically half that, which is what Tom was saying, there's two people for every job, probably yeah. more than that actually in Lovework County. So I think that. it makes it a challenge when we talk about incentivizing <laughs> businesses to bring new jobs to an area where we don't have enough workforce already, which means you're pirating from the existing right. businesses. And, and that's, the, that's the, the area you have to be really careful about, is you don't want to incentivize a new company at the detriment of an existing company. And that's why that's I think it's important to work with our existing businesses, see what we can do for them. Absolutely. And, and when we did the uh, last year when um, the commission did the study on economic development, I think we had three different people that came in that said a majority of your economic development comes from the existing yeah. businesses, the existing people who are in your county. That's, that's why the, I think it's so important. We talked about the leases being up in two years or something like that. You can go back out and track um, something else that Doug got my curiosity on. Do you see this as a what's happening in the country as a trend, and it's going to 
improve? I personally, I, I think I think we're going to continue to see some layoffs. Not not necessarily locally, but but nationally, I think we're going to continue to see some 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 layoffs, particularly of the larger tech companies that are out there. Um, I think it's going to be interesting for Kansas City uh, as a whole because we have you know thousands and thousands of people that 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 report to work or actually most work at home now, uh, report to Cerner, and they've recently been bought. So we don't really know what that impact right. is going to be to Kansas City, if there's going to be an impact. Maybe everybody just works at home yeah. uh, and, and, and stays happy doing what they're doing. But I, I, I think there will definitely be some changes. I saw, saw a statistic the other day that um, you can argue, I suppose, whether or not we're we're in a recession, if we're on the cusp of a recession, if we're well into recession, whatever. Um, but, but ultimately, I saw some statistics that, that to pull us out of a, a recession or the next recession, um, it would take one year at 6% unemployment, which Mark has suggested we're not anywhere near right now. It would take two years at about five years unemployment and, and whatnot. So I, I think kind of the current, the current uh, uh, situation is going to go on for, for a bit. Okay, yeah, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't think there are any magic bullets to pull us okay. out. The cost of fuel and some other things certainly aren't helping. Inflation is not helping. Um, and, and ultimately we're seeing that um, – it, 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 it's, it's more than trickling down to the consumer. When, when the consumer is, is strapped for cash and it's more difficult to buy what you want or you need, uh, the companies are going to struggle as well. And, and you know, I, I think it's easy to blame the companies and, hey, they're price gouging us. But, you know, if you look, to, look into what goes into their pro product, all that stuff's more expensive too, not to mention yeah, supply chain agree. issues. Um, and even, even on things that used to be, you know, relatively, I don't want to say simple, but relatively mundane, like building a home uh, or building an apartment complex or highly complex now when you've got to wait for your, your primary electrical cable, you know, sits on a boat for five months off, off, the, off the port of L.A. So, right, we're, we're, in a, we're in a very strange situation in this country right now. Any other questions for Tom? No, Thank you, sir. I Thank you. It. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. Okay. Uh, We'll go with uh, any additional public comment. I don't think there is anybody. Um, um, Doug, I'll let you uh, well, we, uh, start off. Will we appoint a township board member today? Well, I know there's an opening, um, and there was one applicant, but uh, the clerk, um, I think we'll probably just put it on next week's agenda okay. since it didn't come up this morning. All right. so, um, I, need to I, I prefer to have those types of things on. On okay. an agenda versus right. the last minute, so yeah. we'll just put it on next week. So okay, that'll agenda. work. Oh, uh, let's see. I went to uh, the groundbreaking at the uh, New Tomahawk Park in Baser last Wednesday, and I uh, did the uh, uh, Fourth of July parade in Baser on Monday night. Cool. That's it. Thank you, Mike. Uh, let's see. I had a breakfast with a Linwood City Council member last week, and I've been doing a lot of um, visiting with people. Anything else? Okay. That's it. Jeff? Uh, Easton City Council meeting is postponed to next week because of the holiday, but uh, attended Ludmore City's Council meeting last night. Okay. Um, attended a special session for the um, Transit Authority and. They had an executive session, and no decision was made. I just had one on the Lansing uh, had their 4th of July Independence celebration. They had to move it this year, and even though it was hot, you know, we still had to fight some rain. But, but overall, I thought it turned out a nice crowd. I think they did a, did a pretty good job. I probably would guess, and I don't know for sure, they'll probably be back at Bernard Park next year because I think a lot of that groundwork could be done. But it, it, was, a, it was a good show. And Mark, do you have anything? David? Okay, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Steven? Aye. Coberson? Aye. Commissioner Collins? Aye. I vote aye.